these jobs. All right, so the best way, if you're a beginner, do it with eyeshadow. Okay, so let's take this really simply. We're gonna do the, the one I just told you about, what I call the power liner, where we take it from underneath. Okay. All right, so if I look at her under eye shape, if you look straight into that lens for me, it's got a beautiful, she's slightly rounded. I don't want to emphasize that. The basic rule, corner of the nose to the eye and up. If you have in doubt, guys, just remember that is a really good line if you're not sure. Now, all I'm going to do with eyeshadow, and this is what's great. If your eyelid's heavy, it doesn't matter. I want you to go straight. Oh, how good is she? She's not even blinking. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do this what I call baby steps. Like I... You know, I've done this for a long time now, so I can go straight through with eyeliners and stuff like that. Now, the really important thing, people ask me, how do you get them even? If you follow my rule with following the bottom shape of the eye, if the eyes are uneven, you've got to match liner for that eye. The hardest part with liners is getting your flick even, so I like to work on that first. Now, because it's eyeshadow, it doesn't matter if it's a bit thick, this is just how you're going to learn. So I try and get my flicks, that one's a little bit higher, that's okay. And I love just to catch a lot of like this little bit of outer corner. And this might sound crazy, but this one little trick will change your life. When you come into this corner, if the eye comes up like that and you follow the lash line, you're going to make the eyes look a bit down like that. There's a trick. When you come into this outer corner, you're allowed to blink. Instead of following her eye shape, tilt it slightly and pull it slightly more that way. And then what's really important, guys, is the end of that line disappears to nothing. So what I always recommend, I have my, um, what do you call it, my eyeliner brushes. I literally have five of them sitting beside me. All of them with a hint of foundation ready to go. So... I'm just, I didn't like how high I did that, so I'm just got a little bit of foundation on, on a number angle brush and just giving myself the shape I want. This is what carries and frames. It doesn't matter if the top one isn't as perfect, but this one's got to be like, put your A bang on this one. When I do this myself, I can go straight in with liquid and kind of go for it, but I just want to break it down. Okay. So now, her highest point of her eye is not directly in the middle, it is one millimeter that way. If I lined all the way across, it's gonna cause a droop, because what comes up must come down. The highest point is just there, so I'm gonna do a little flick, and I'm gonna come onto the top lid, and make sure that line disappears before we get anywhere near that point. And this is where it works for a droopy eyelid, people. Even if the lid's like that, it doesn't matter. You're gonna go straight on top, let your model blink, blink, blink. <laughs> and go blink, 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 blink. And then any skin you go on top of, blink, blink, blink. Make sure your brushes are really soft. And you can do this as thin and or thick as you want, and blink, blink, blink. And it's basically going and disappearing before it starts to travel upwards. And then you can have a look at it and start looking at the shape. Now, I think that's a little bit too thick, so I'm gonna thin it down. This is just a little bit of micellar water. I just want to lift it a little bit. Just on the edge. And sometimes do it with eyeshadow first. What I like about it is when you put the liquid on, you get this like velvety tip. Okay, so now I'm going on to my brush number 14. These brushes now have point technology in them. The shape will stay. Also, this, might, this crystal fiber hair has more slip in it. And what that means is when you're doing a liner, it doesn't grip the lid. It's a little bit like ice skates. So the product I'm going to use, I really love the Inglot 177. Liquids are great and felt tips are great. One, if you know what you're doing. Two, if you like that brush size. Um, but I, some of them can crack a little bit. I, don't, I, just, like if, I just like gels because you've got more playtime. Now, see that little triangle we've got? Look down again for me. That triangle is there because, look straight ahead, because of this lit brow. If her brow was even heavier, that triangle would be even bigger. So remember, I've got my stencil, so now I want to blacken the interior of that as much as I can. And look to your knees. I always tell girls when I'm doing makeup, look to the knees, it stretches your eyelid. So remember, the more step you get here, that means you've got a bigger eyelid fold. Pull blink out of blink, and straight ahead. Okay. Now, there's a product called Drew Line. This is it here. 
So I get this from Inglot as well. And what this does, it liquefies any dried out gels, but just don't use too much of it because you'll make the product too watery. And now what we need to do, when you're going in to get that perfect shape, make sure you've always got one or two angles on standby with a drop of foundation. So I'm gonna give these to Courtney. You can use, um, you can use micellar water on a cotton, but the only thing is you, if you've got foundation already on, you're gonna take it off. Now what I like to do with the tip, sorry while that plane goes by, it's gotta be as sharp as you can get it. Whenever makeup artists send me their portfolio if they're trying to get on fashion week teams and stuff like that. Two things I look at, just so you know, a bit of secret information, is their brow finish and their, if they're doing a liner, the tip. Because this is where it take it makes the good from the great. It's just this tip right here. And how I do it, angle brush with a hint of foundation. And what it does, another great tip too, when you're doing your point, don't always take it to the extension you want. I always have a great tip. Make it a little bit shorter because when you do the scissor effect, it's going to extend it by a micromillimeter anyway. This is where all my time is spent. Look down for me. So if there's an eyeliner brief, I make sure there's no oil on the eyelids. Don't put moisturizers there. It'll make it shift. And I spend all my time getting that underneath flip perfect. Um, even if it takes me... 20 minutes to get it so perfect I do that because then if time runs out a bit of lip gloss even don't even need mascara sometimes here's another fantastic tip I've designed this other brush number 17 <laughs> in Japan I noticed they do their eyeliners um, with a square brush so it's a square brush and what that does it's like a stamping technique so if you're if you're not really good at running eyeliner across the lid you get this brush it's a square tip and then like a stamp look down for me you just stamp it across the eye what i also love this brush for is if you want to get liner underneath the eyes look down for me this is getting it right in the lashes and coming underneath. I know it's not always the most comfortable. I find that the easiest way. So remember, square tip, it looks really similar to my number 16. And so if you love an eyeliner but you have trouble getting it straight, in the product, stamp, 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 stamp. And I saw the Japanese do it. Oh, I have to do that brush. So that's my number 17. Another, this is a great cheap option. Um, there's a couple of liners I love. Um, Charlotte told me if you want to spend the money, yeah. Oh, there's a MAC one that I love too, which is called Brush Black. And there's L'Oreal have one as well. So the ones I always have in my kit, Charlotte Tilbury, the MAC, I use this one today, has a beautiful point. So if you want to get the shape with eyeshadow and gels you find a bit tricky, these are great. Look close to me. Close down there. The only thing I have a little bit of an issue with, and this is brand new, is using these in people's eyes when you're doing 20 models. I don't do that. Um, that's when I always go to a gel. So if I'm if I'm with a celebrity or um, you know it's a great job, sometimes I'll just buy it just for the client. I just find um, you've got to be really careful of hygiene. But these are great. These felt tips on yourself, they're awesome because they can get just in between. Okay, and see that's just that beautiful point just on the tip. So now I'm gonna come and do the other side. The reason I have three different liner brushes in my range, because I'm all about getting the liner size you want in one hit. Because a lot of the brushes you buy, it's one size. What happens if you want it thinner than that or thicker than that? So I've got my number 14, that's the finest one, it gives you the sharpest point. Um, then they go to the bent eyeliner. Yes, they're bent for a reason. These are the bent ones, and do you want to know why is it bent? It's for when you want to do eyeliner, look straight ahead, inside, where it's really hard to get that corner. This is awesome because you rest your wrist and all you do is tilt the brush. So you can do inner corner, outer corner, inner corner, outer corner, without having to, it's just harder with another brush. And then I've got my thicker one, which I love this one, my number 13. This one's calligraphy technology. You can get the finest point and a thick line as well. So this is what I love to do right at the end, is just, it's like an eraser, you're just pushing that line right in, making sure that line goes to nothing. This is a bit that's distracting. If they look straight ahead and you see a chunky bit of liner, it should be absolutely nothing. It should be squashed right in there. So 
And what I'm going to do right at the end before we take some photos, I'll just go back and check the skin.